So usually when I do these behind the scenes segments, I do something that's eh, kind of like slow based and very raconteur. This time around, I want to do something really interesting and I want to talk about what's in the credits. The first credit is Chris Cortez as Dorman Hammer. Dorman Hammer was um, a character that I actually had invented in for Drunk Max 3. In some of the early drafts of Drunk Max 3, there was this like giant character. He was like, um, you would never see him completely. It would always be like forced perspective things. Like he would punch someone, but it'd be like a forced perspective fist punching the person. Um, or we would see from his POV and I was gonna get like the tripod and raise it and kind of make it look like you know, he was looking down upon people. Dorman Hammer was a special effect in Drug Max 3, and it became very evident I didn't need him uh, because we had Sylvia, the witch, that kind of could provide all the magical part. We cut that character from Drunk Max 3, but I always liked that name, and I always liked the joke that we would do. The two things my mother needed to give birth to me, a doorman and a hammer, I just liked that joke and that name, so I said, I'm gonna use that again one day in the future. So when I started uh, coming up with how Dorman would be made, I actually was inspired by Mad Max, villain of the second movie, who has uh, the, the uh, hockey mask and is uh, wearing the leather, you know, speedo looking thing and has like the S&M gear um, and talks like this, or at least that's my approximation of it. And I just, just walk away. You know, that whole part, I thought that was so funny, like unintentionally hilarious when I first saw it. And I was like, God, I want like that, like a version of that character just shoved into um, my movie. Other aspects of the character were actually taken from unused concepts of uh, roommates. There's a character called General Sumari who um, would wear a mask and very over the top, very grandiose. The elements I took from Sumari uh, from early roommates was uh, sticking him, make, making him more confident in Stab Your Attention. I'd say of the two, uh, he's more confident and knows how to kind of manipulate um, Rennie, as opposed to in roommates, that mass character was definitely more, um, uh, could be pushed around, you know, his buttons could be pressed very easily. With the exception of the fight scene, which uh, I shot with Brian, on his day of filming, all my shots uh, as Dorman were done um, in one day. Um, Rebecca helped me considerably um, because it was really hard delivering lines, and it was really hard, um, you know, with the mask and having to vomit out the blood and uh, do all that on my day. So she was the one feeding me the lines, and then later in post, I would re record uh, the lines to have my voice acting in it. Um, but knowing that I acted physically, the physicalities of it while we were recording, the blood was really gross. It was the same um, blood effect that Brian and I had done for French Assassin for Bad Comb Over, where I spit out blood and I topple over. This is kind of like the successor to that scene if you look at it, because in that scene I kind of just spit out the blood and I fall. Here, I'm vomiting blood the whole fucking movie. Uh, that was a really harsh day. When we were done, I was covered. My beard was covered in, um, like, caked in fake blood. But yeah, that was Dormant Hammer. He was quite fun. Brian O'Leary's as Rennie Holtschneiser. Rennie was inspired by Arnold Schwarzenegger. The whole basis of this film was... I was watching Predator, the original, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and um, the scene where he throws the machete or the knife or something and it goes through this guy he gets slammed against a wall and then Schwarzenegger says stick around and that was my inspiration I thought well what if the guy was still alive and and he's like stick around what the hell man he killed me Brian's performance was so good the, the thing with Brian is um, he's always just knocks these parts out of the ballpark I always write a character in a way and then, you know, he does that take I want, and then he just comes up with something else that's so much funnier than I could ever imagine. And the voice was something that, you know, um, I told him don't do an Arnold impersonation, but I, I want this guy to clearly, like he's all American, he's got the tattoo here of the American flag. I told him I want you to be, to be inspired by um, 
Guile from the Street Fighter movie that Jean-Claude Van Damme played and um, go with that he came up with something that was like pretty much what I imagined you know I wasn't sure what I wanted and he gave me something that I absolutely fell in love with. Dr. Liam Frostein as Countdown Voice worked with him for the first time on the revised family edition uh, he played my oncologist um, uh, that we also named Dr. Liam Frostein. He played a fictional version of himself and, uh, you know, um, absolutely real person. Um, in no way a fake persona I have created to, you know, for my amusement. Not at all. Absolutely a real person. Um, and in this movie, uh, he is the countdown timer voice in the background, and we heavily modulated the voice um, to make it sound very deep and very commanding and uh um you know hardly you cannot i i know dr liam prostein very well and i cannot recognize um the his voice in that scene so um thank you dr liam prostein you did a wonderful job jack cortez as battle voices first movie i made with my son was the family edition he was very tiny he was a baby he wasn't even a year old you know he had no real experience um making that movie second movie i made with him was called the revised family edition and in the revised family edition he was obviously old enough to dictate a lot and um you know just had a really great experience from it when that movie was done he told me i want to be in every single one of your movies and i said you absolutely will in this uh particular film i didn't really you know, it's only two people, so I didn't really have uh, a role, a substantial one for him. I told him he could be uh, the battle voice. In the background, we need to have, like, people yelling and, like, you know, saying, like, go, 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 and all these other things. And, um, you know, I need, like, really weird creature noises and stuff. And I went to our, our outtakes, our audio outtakes from the Revised Family Edition. Uh, Jack is a kid, and uh, though he had fun doing these projects he definitely wiggles a lot and makes very silly sounds in between takes so i got all those moments in this unused uh audio and you know cut snippets and just heavily modulated it and like put different effects and experimented with it and um oh my god just i love it it's one of my favorite parts of the sound design and uh jack was a part of that executive consultant rebecca k sampson so rebecca doesn't want to be my producer essentially from what i understand she has her own version of the story there are certain uh compromises that she feels i wouldn't make in uh my stories and in my films that would want her to be my producer so instead uh we came up with the title of executive consultant which is to say that uh she's essentially my producer in all but name and title. She helps a lot on all of my projects for the longest time now. She is absolutely my right hand person uh, when it comes to this sort of stuff. And in this film, it was absolutely no different. For this film, she read the script, the different drafts, and gave me her feedback on it and, you know, things that she felt worked that didn't work things that she felt need to be a little bit more clear to the audience any shot that i was in that i couldn't film so the fight stuff and uh of course the um all the shots of me as Dorman, uh she shot it all you know helping me set up the sets um the lighting the green screen all that stuff rebecca does and she does wonderfully uh, the day we were filming brian's um, scenes day one of filming we had ordered Panera bread for for lunch for our lunch break and they had delivered it to the wrong house and so she while we were filming ran out the door and went to go track our food down you know find out what the hell happened to it also wrangling our son you know um, once all the shots I'm in on that first day uh, were done you know she ran off and took care of him so I could film Brian and direct him and do all the stuff for uh, the rest of day one all of day two it was like a struggle because um she was wrangling jack you know we used to have baby wranglers I, you, know, you see that credit in a lot of my old movies and in this one it, it was really her she was doing a lot of the wrangling um because just you know the show had to go on and we thought jack would be cool enough he had done a movie before he understood it not quite she also gave me her thoughts on the early 
cuts of the film and uh, what worked and what didn't work. So, um, you know, executive consultant. Story by Chris Cortez. Mentioned briefly earlier, the story came from watching Predator. What what would be their reaction? Can you imagine dying? Like you're dying and some guy says a pun as you're dying? It's just, you know, like, insulting. Screenplay by Chris Cortez and Brian O'Leary's. So, yeah, I, I wrote the, uh, when it came to the screenplay, I never intended Brian to be a part of it. But, um, you know, I had written the first couple of drafts. I think I wrote the first two drafts. I sent it off to him. I, I wanted his thoughts on it, and he gave me some thoughts. I, I said, you know, man, would you... Do you want to do, like, a, a, a dialogue rewrite? I asked him, you know, like, keep the set and keep the story, everything, you know, but just the dialogue. Do you want to, like, go through and do, like, a revision with it? And Brian was like, absolutely. So he went through and he did this beautiful revision that became draft three and you know he sent it back to me and it was just so funny there is like most of the funniest jokes in this movie were from that draft that he did i ended up doing one more polish i did a draft four because there were certain lines he had um removed from the script in his version but it, it honestly it was just really me cherry picking stuff i enjoyed from the two drafts Directed by Chris Cortez. Directing was really fun on this. Uh, this was the first time I shot entirely on green screen. I had never done an entirely digital set before, and this is something I actually wanted to do ever since I got a green screen. It was also the first movie I shot anamorphically, which did prove a lot of challenges. There's a lot of stuff I learned shooting anamorphically. You, you really need a lot more space than you think. Because, you know, you, you, you see a squeezed image, at least I do, um, when I'm filming on my iPhone. And then later on, when you de-squeeze it, you feel like there is more space. But then, like, you know, the opening shot of them being so close together, I thought we were so much more far apart. You know, so that that's a huge factor when it comes to anamorphic. It's just kind of, like, really overcompensating when you're doing wide shots and things like that. Edited by Chris Cortez. Editing was tough, but I was pleased with the way it came out. There's a lot of elements that was needed. Uh, you know, we were working with the uh, 5.1 surround sound, which was fantastic. Some of the effects didn't come out exactly how I'd planned. Glowing blobs in the background of some shots, and I didn't uh, plan out, again, the anamorphicness. So, you know, Brian gets cut <laughs> a lot of the times, like his sword seems to disappear and whatnot. Overall, very satisfied with the edit though. I think first time you're watching it, you get it. You see the whole thing, it goes really quick. You're in, you're out, it's a laugh, it's fun. I enjoyed it. Music and clips used. All the people that you see listed in the credits under that are fucking talented. You know, give credit where credit is due. Water bottle. Ooh, I've never explained the origin of this. This has appeared uh, in a lot of credits of a lot of movies that I've done. Water bottle was when we were making one of our earlier movies. I think it was Band Aid. We were trying to sync the credits to the song, and uh, we didn't have enough roles, or like we had put all the actors already. We had put all the writing. We had put all the music. You know, everything. And we needed just one more credit. And so I was looking, you know, we were looking around the room and we were editing this in uh, Brian's old bedroom. And there's just a water bottle there. And I pointed at it and I went water bottle. And then Brian just wrote water bottle. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a blast to record and to talk about. And um, I hope you guys enjoy all the bonus features. First, to have your attention. See you soon.